been tied to the Sonic scene in any way in the past year or so, you may well know that there's been a single piece of merchandise released in 2011 that caused probably the largest stir in the fanbase's history. I'm sure that this piece needs little introduction. Yes, just over a week before the 20th anniversary of Sonic the Hedgehog, First the Figures revealed this statue based on the 20th anniversary promotional artwork. It was revealed that there was to be only 1,000 of these in the world. The main catch, this was to be a piece of merchandise that normal money couldn't buy. The piece was restricted to Sega employees, friends, promotional gifts and contest prizes. It caused a big uproar from the collectors in the community, myself included. And to this day, the piece remains an elusive and hard to find piece, fetching unholy amounts at auction. To give you an idea, the first reported sighting of this statue on eBay sold for just over $1,500. Yeah. The price has gradually gone down since then, but if you see this on eBay, then expect to see your wallet impacted in a big way. I'm not going to say exactly where I got mine, or exactly how much I paid right here, but all I'm going to say is to search hard and to think outside the box. I'll put some follow-up on possible ways to source this piece at the end of the film. With that in mind, this is what you will get. The box. Whilst large isn't quite as big as the other boxes I've seen from First for Figures, if I was to give you a rough guide, compare the size of the box to Metal Sonics. The statue comes with its own brown cardboard box with everything typical of a First for Figures statue. Such things like the description, product weight, number, and a simple monochrome picture of what's inside. Slice the main seals of tape, lift the flaps, and remove the top cover to get to the main box, seen here wrapped in a clear plastic bag. It also gives us our first hints of what kind of box style we're going to get. Removing the box and its bag, we can see that in a large departure from the rest of the classic Sonic First for Figures line, this box seems to be a lot more simple in design than the rest. It's mostly covered by a dark blue checker pattern. The front has the 20th anniversary slogan, still unstoppable after 20 years, and the two sides bearing the 20th anniversary Sonic artwork and the licensing details on the back. There's no blurb about the character on this piece, it's all just legal details and safety information, as well as the product number. The top features the 20th anniversary logo and what's inside the package. The box is lacking in some styles, but due to its nature as a promotional only piece, this is to be expected. Opening up, the styrofoam casing is here, and upon removing, there's another difference from most statues. There's no authenticity card. On the other hand, however, first of figures well-known images on the styrofoam are here, the 20th anniversary logo is placed both on the front and back. This statue has been open once before, so there's no tape to cut. Lifting the lid reveals that the statue is made up of several parts, five in total, the most I've seen so far for any Sonic statue. First thing to note is the large base on the right, followed by the Sonic figure in the center, and on the left you can see three things. Firstly, are both of Sonic's hands packaged in the top left corner, and just below that is the TV item box. Assembling the statue is fairly easy. Start off with the base by lifting it out of its slot. On the bottom are the product number and a few other details such as the 20th anniversary logo, the edition size and the number, more about that later on. The slogan and licensing details are also here. I managed to get a hold of number 495. Interestingly enough, whilst this is the first for figures piece through and through, I'm yet to actually see any mention of them anywhere within this package. Turning the base back the right way up, there's a little bit of dust here and there, most likely from the factory. This is easily wiped away though. The next thing you need to add is the item box. This thing is very large, but it's also very light. It's about a 2.5 inch cube. The box sits in the small indented square in the base, meaning that it's easy to orient. Next up comes the Sonic figure itself. It needs to be removed and unwrapped before the hands can be attached. The closed hand sits on his right wrist, while the pointing hand rests on his left. The fit on these hands is quite loose, but the way that they are indented makes them easy to position properly. In the bottom of Sonic's foot is a single metal peg which slides into this one hole on the base. To finish the statue, press the peg all the way home. It's a little tricky to go in, but it's not that hard. After this, the statue is finished, and now we can take a closer look. The 
Here's a look at the statue in its completed form. If it hasn't hit you already, this piece looks gorgeous. But first things first, here are some dimensions. This is easily the largest base of any Sonic statue up to now. It's a good 9 inches in diameter. It may be wide, but it's also very low. It's no more than an inch and a half tall. Despite that though, the statue stands an impressive 10 inches and weighs almost 3 kilograms. It certainly has the weight and size of a first for figures piece, but does it have the same standards? The pose is that seen in the 20th anniversary promotional picture. A modern rendition of Sonic is stood, doing his trademark finger wag whilst his other arm rests atop a classic item box, bearing the classic style Sonic artwork. Earlier, I mentioned that there were 1,000 pieces of this statue produced. That, in a way, is not the whole story. In truth, there are two versions of this statue making up a total of 1,000. The difference lies with the image shown in the item box. The first and most common version is seen here, using artwork seen in Eastern and Middle Territories. The second version uses artwork primarily seen in the United States of America. The split is very disproportionate. The Eastern version covers 900 of the 1,000 units, meaning that if you want the US edition, there are only 100 in the world up for grabs, making them even more rare and expensive. Looking at the statue itself, you can see why so many collectors were up in arms. One thing that's pleasantly surprised me about the statue is the distinct lack of plastic. Having seen all the images on the internet, I was sure that a lot of this statue would be made of the stuff, but no. I'd say that at least 80% of the statue is made of resin. The statue sculpting and painting work wouldn't go amiss on any statue by First for Figures. In my opinion, this has to be one of the finest representations of modern Sonic I've ever seen. Unlike the Joy Polis figure I reviewed before, the fact that this figure is made from resin means that there's no seam lines to be found anywhere. Some of the edges here and there do look a little rough, but the overall application of the paint is wonderful. If you can't already tell, the colouring on Sonic isn't to be sneezed at either. Sonic Shade of Blue ticks all right boxes and likewise, his tan sections all look to be on point. In addition to this, the overall colour scheme is brilliantly chosen. The main theme here is contrast in the colours. Sonic's blue complements the double tone green base brilliantly, and with all the other colours such as the red on Sonic's shoes and the grey monitor, it makes it a feast for the eyes. Sonic himself is standing proud with a confident smile on his face. He is sculpted and represented beautifully. Much like the Joy Polis figure, Everything about him looks organic and natural, including his socks, gloves, and proportions. Notice how Sonic's arms and legs vary in thickness depending on what part of the leg or arm you're looking at. The proportions are, quite simply, perfect. The spines, the arms, the head, the eyes, everything. There are no flaws in the paintwork, and definitely no evidence of smudging. The smile is moulded a little strangely, but when it's lit up properly, it looks fine. There are all sorts of neat little details around the statue as well. The best for me has to be this monitor. It has an actual clear screen on it. As you can see, it adds a 3D, old school look to the TV. No doubt based off the old CRT televisions that were everywhere in the 90s, as it catches the light and reflects off. This TV has to be my favourite part of the statue. The television is completely made out of resin, apart from the screen. But really, apart from the screen, the image, and the small red button on the front, the TV hasn't really got that much else to it. The base is another aspect of the statue that I love. At a glance, it's very similar to the base that's used on the classic Sonic statue. There are some key differences, however. In this case, the top of the base is patterned green stripes as opposed to being just solid green. The top of the base is also made from resin, unlike the plastic used on classic Sonic. The grass overhangs the edge of the base, adding a great sense of depth as it overlaps the checkered rock. The checker pattern is a little different in colour as well. Instead of brown and yellow, brown and orange have been used bringing it closer, I feel, to the original Green Hill stage. A final aspect of this base is the 20th anniversary logo which has been placed in front of Sonic. The logo is a decal which has been raised up a little. Maybe it could have been better if they made the logo a little more three-dimensional. But as it stands, this adds a good extra splash of colour and ultimately ties this up as a 20th anniversary piece. Up until now, I've always called this a statue. But taking everything into account, I'm beginning to think of this as more of a diorama. 
is complemented by the amount of activity in the scene. There are just so many different aspects to look at. To explain, you have Sonic and everything that's making him up, as well as what he's doing. You also have a separate monitor for showing its own image. There's a Brighton Ray's 20th Anniversary logo in the front, all atop a green hill base which jazzes up the whole concept with its alternating shades of green. And then, even after all of that, there's Checker Pattern to look at as well. Put simply, this piece has a lot of stuff going on in it. And on that note, here are some final remarks. When I got my classic Sonic from First for Figures, it was out of a real want to own this piece. I have to say that actually having one here in front of me is quite surreal. The quality of this figure is without a doubt on par with the other collectible statues First for Figures have produced. The biggest appeal to this figure, however, is its rarity and its exclusivity, and on top of that, it's just a wonderful piece to look at. Maybe this piece could inspire future statues or even dioramas. It's the diorama vibe I get with this piece anyway. So, the question that many of you will be asking now is, how can you find one of these without paying several months' wages? Since the end of the 20th anniversary celebrations in 2011, the contests and giveaways appear to have all stopped. This means that the next realistic alternative is at auction. And as you can probably guess, these are all still fetching horrendous amounts. My advice there is, look around and use some outside-the-box thinking. I mean that there could be some auctions that could slip under the radar sometimes. For example, an auction may be listed as a figurine as opposed to a statue. As a result, it may not be found by as many people. My recommendation is this. Instead of searching for Sonic Statue or First for Figure Sonic or any of those, try simply searching for Sonic 20th Anniversary or something more general. You may just stumble across what you're looking for. The site you use is also important. If you can, don't use your local eBay localization, and that includes eBay.com for those in the United States. Instead, try going to eBay's global buying website. Not only may you turn up more results that wouldn't normally appear, but the website automatically lists anything that will post to your country. It's been an excellent tool for me as a collector several times. To all of those still wanting to own this piece, all the best of luck in your searches. As a word though, please just don't bid on this with the intention of selling it on. There are people out there who truly want this just for the piece alone, and not the cash it will fetch them. If you bid, make sure it's coming to a good home. I personally think this piece is incredible, and it will have a home in my Sonic collection for many, many years to come.